good uh, Tuesday evening. I uh, hope everybody has been having a great week so far. And, uh, oh, spring, has it sprung or are we going to get a little more taste of weather? You know, um, as we look, and I don't know, you know, um, how the young, young kids are. I know whenever I was a teenager and everything, I wasn't <clears throat> as much concerned about what all was going on around the world and everything. But as uh, I turned to the Lord and started getting in the Word of God, I come to realize that there is events that is going to happen and uh, um, because the Word of God tells us that there's going to come a point in time uh, when there'll be a, a seven years tribulation and then uh, Satan be uh, cast for a thousand years into the bottomless pit and then released for a short period. As it leads up to it, one thing that we can be guaranteed through the Word of God is that the spiritual battles, the spiritual warfare is going to escalate. And often I think that people fail to understand it's not something new, it's something that has been from uh, the beginning of humanity on earth and as time has progressed uh, so has the spiritual warfare and so tonight what I want to look at is uh, taking control and I want to start out in the book of Daniel chapter 10 and I'm not going to read all of it, but you can read all of it. It's uh, There's 21 verses in it. I do want to pick out about four different verses. And uh, because Daniel was a man of faith. And uh, so let's start with verse 1. And in the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belshazzar. And the thing was true, but the time appointed was long. And he understood the thing, and he had understanding of the vision. And then he goes into three weeks of praying and fasting. Uh, he did the the partial fast where he didn't eat anything that was uh, on his highly like it was just enough to get him through and then in verse 12 uh, then he said to me and this is a, an angel of God fear not Daniel for from the first day that thou didst set the heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God. Thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Verse 14. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days, for yet the vision is for many days. Now there's one thing about it that you're going to learn, and this is why I take control, because when we get into the New Testament, there is a lot of, as I said Sunday and previously, a lot of times a sentence will start out if. Uh, many times Jesus said, if you, if you do this, if you do that, then he would do this or the Father would do that. And so 
it's our responsibility to take control of our daily walk, spiritual as well as physical. And, uh, and there's one thing about it. When God calls you to do something, you're going to attract the, get the enemy's attention. And that's why when you step out for God, you can expect to encounter roadblocks, thorns. You're going to uh, encounter spiritual hindrances. And that's why often the greatest battles precede the greatest blessings. And that's why we you don't never, ever give up. And I know what it is to face certain battles. I've not faced some that some has. Uh, but I've faced some battles that... Uh, was really challenging and uh, tried to discourage me, tried to get me to quit, tried to get me to feel like God didn't care. Yet, all that is is the lie and the deception of the enemy. And that's why you have to take control. Before David was crowned king, uh, he experienced one of the hardest times that he had ever faced. If you read in 1 Samuel chapter 30, uh, when he was living at Ziklag, which was a border city of the Philistines and Israel. And uh, he knew if he went, lived in Israel, King Saul would come after him. But he's far enough in to Philistia that the Philistines, they didn't quite trust him, but they allowed him. And so for a period of time he was there, and as said in Ziklag, then another enemy came while him and his men were out fighting battles and took their, their families, their children, their wives, and all their wealth, their goods, their herds, and everything. And when they come back in and found that the place was deserted, the men that was with David spoke about stoning David and killing him. And there was nobody there backing him. But David did what we have to learn to do. And he encouraged himself in the Lord. And he asked God, shall we pursue? Can we recover? And God told him, said, you're going to pursue him. You're going to recover everything plus. And so him and his men, they went, and then after that, you find that next thing David knew, he became king of Judah, and then king of all of Israel as well. Judah was the Lord part. Judah means praise. David was a praise worshiper of God. And, uh, and it's just like before Christ started his public ministry. Um, he was tested by Satan for 40 days and 40 nights. And then uh, you get uh, uh, when actually when Jesus was born and King Herod found out that the Messiah, the King had been born and he didn't know who it was because the Matt Magi's didn't go back and tell him that they had found uh, the Messiah, the King. And uh, so he had all the child male children, two and under, all the way up from Ramah down to Jerusalem. Had all the firstborn male child, two and under, killed. And that's why I talked about the the women of Ramah uh, weeping 
and crying. You go back into Exodus and you find that um, Moses, whom God didn't know what he had a plan for Moses, but what did Pharaoh do? He decided to have all the male children, firstborn male children, all of them to be killed. And the amazing thing of it is, is that Moses' older sister came up with a plan, and I'd say it's a God plan because she said, let's put him in a, a place that Pharaoh's daughter will see him. And sure enough, they did, and she did, and she couldn't, she could not think of having little baby Moses killed. So she paid, she paid Moses' own family to raise him. Man, that is God. They see, the thing is, the enemy was trying to destroy the leader that was going to lead the people out of Egypt into the promised land. So when you're on the edge of your purpose, the ledge upon which you stand will begin to shake. And you'll either stand or you'll run from your destiny. Satan always plans to try and disrupt um, a prophetic destiny, just like uh, Moses with the birth of Christ, with the ministry of Jesus, and so forth. It's not stopped. Anybody he has an ideal that's going to do something great for God, he sets his sights on and starts targeting them. He starts making plans. Um, in 1 Timothy, go there, 1 Timothy chapter 1, and in verse 18, Paul writes to Timothy, This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou, mightest, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. Hmm. And then verse 19, Holding faith. And a good conscience, which some have put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. Now, there's always going to be those that if it don't work for them, they're going to try to make it hard on you. And that's just like you read verse 20, of whom Hymenaeus and Alexandria... Uh, whom I delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. In other words, they were contradicting the word that Paul had been preaching. And so Paul put them out of church. And, you know, that probably wasn't a, a popular thing then. But they were doing more damage than anything because instead of faith apparently they may have been trying to put them back under law or something if you remember in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4 for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, carnal but mighty to the pulling down of strongholds and casting down imagination there of high things that exalt itself against God in reality, it doesn't matter if your adversary is aware of your assignment. If God called you, he won't revoke his call. 
And too many times I've watched people, well, God's called me into, into the ministry. And then the next thing you know, they're not in the ministry. Now, God did not revoke their calling. What happened? Their adversary, the devil, Satan, his little demons, they're organized, and I preached a message the other Sunday about this, about the, the demonic spirits and everything, and how they're structured, and they will attack. And if you aren't ready for them, they will make your life miserable. That's why life consists of conflicts and spiritual calling attracts spiritual attacks. That's why I don't think that it's uncommon that you're just the only one that's getting going through a hard time. We will always be fighting something. Opinions, bad attitudes, hindrances, bad spirits, spiritual opposition, or persecution, and or all the above. And that's why in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3, Paul told Tim said, Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Because he knew that just as he had went through things, so would Timothy go through things. And guess what? I go through things. And if you're serving the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to go through things too. Don't stop. Now I'm going to give you three things to discuss that you'll discover. Number one. God is not moved by your feelings. He's moved by your faith. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please God, or to please Him. For he that come to God must believe that He is, and that He is a re rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. In other words, you got you got to have that bulldog tenacity. I mean, you got to be like a dog on a ham bone. You're not going to let go for nobody because if God called you, you're going to go do it, no matter what. Uh, Christ is touched by our infirmities. That's why he responds to our prayer of faith. It is the faith that releases the power of God to minister to those in need. That's why you've got to have that faith. You've got to build, keep your faith built up. The second thing is God is not moved by your circumstances, but by his word. Now, did you catch this? God isn't moved by your circumstances. He's moved by his word. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12 said, Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. That's why God is attracted to those who believe his word of the covenant. We have the new covenant is better than the old covenant. And God is the same today as he was back then, so he can still do whatever is needed. And, and you know, um, that's why you, what did Jesus do when he was being tested by Satan? But as he was getting ready to start the ministry for 40 days, 40 nights, Satan was testing and tempting him. And Jesus did what? Quoted the word, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. You know, that's why we have to learn 
to keep the word going in, keep the word going in. It's so important for us to hear the word. Not just on a Sunday, not just on a, month, a Tuesday or a Wednesday evening, but we need that word going in, day in and day out. And as that word goes in, it keeps our faith level rising a little bit. The third thing is, God will deliver you from the attack if you remain steadfast. Now let me read you 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation, also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. See, that's why I think a lot of people think, well, God, just remove this problem. Just take this problem away. And God says, no, I won't do that, but I'll get you through it. You've got to walk in faith. And that's not always the easy thing. I want you to go to 2 Timothy chapter 4. I'll give you a second to get there. In uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, let's look at verse 17 and 18. Well, let's get verse 16. At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it not, may not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. And will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So be it. In other words, Paul knew. That's why God will deliver you. But you've got to stand fast. You've got to be steadfast in the Word of God. Because they're going to come. I mean, you get ready. You start witnessing to people. You get to talking to people about being saved, being born again, about the kingdom of God, about repentance, about getting out of an ungodly lifestyle and start serving the our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And sooner or later you will come under a spiritual attack. And just as I've said before, Satan uses people just as God uses people. And that's why we have to we have to keep in mind, we have to keep focus. The reason that we're attacked is when God's got a plan of something that we can't see what's ahead. But he doesn't know if we'll stay steadfast and stay in, let him upon our steps and go in the direction that he wants done. When it's all said and done, we'll come out purer than ever, sort of like in the refiner's fire, We'll come out with the impurities off of us and we'll look back. We'll have fought the good fight of faith that Paul was talking about, the warfare that we go through. And again, as we get closer to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the spiritual warfare is going to increase. Not decrease, but increase. So that means 
more than ever, we, as the body of Christ that profess to be Christians, need to understand that we're going to go through warfare. And it's up to us to put on the whole armor of God. It's up to us to take control and not let the enemy deceive us. He's going to set traps. He's going to set snares. He's going to lie. He, deception is one of his greatest weapons. And that's why Jesus said, you'll know the truth and the truth shall make you free make that means it is a process and just as Paul went through the process because you can find when when Paul started seeking God because the messenger of Satan had been sent to buffet him he was a thorn in his flesh and and Paul was getting all upset about it but then when God gave him the revelation that Paul, my grace is sufficient. Grace is God's presence, God's power, and God's provision. And when Paul finally got that revelation, he said, I will rather therefore gladly rejoice in my infirmities. In other words, in my weaknesses. Because when I am weak, guess what? Jesus is strong. God the Father is strong. And it's like Sunday morning's message about the Trinity abiding in us. you got the Holy Spirit. You've got the Word, Jesus Christ. And Jesus said Him and the Father would make their abode not just with us, but in us. That's why in 1 John you have Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Because we've got the creator of all creations. And all we have to do is tap into the source. We just have to reach inward and build that relationship up with God that no matter what comes our way, we are more than overcomers. We are super victorious. We are not going to let the, the evil, demonic, spiritual aspect of this world keep us closed up, shut down, or quit. We're going to stay strong. You have to stay strong. You have to take control. And as you do, you'll never regret it. So I hope I give you something to think about. I know I'm a little brief tonight. Tomorrow night I'm going to give I'm going to go into a little bit more. And because as I said, you know, I've watched people that was called into the ministry. And as my pastor told me at the very beginning, he said, Randy, until you know exactly which ministry he's called you into, just let the people know, be praying for you, because you know there's a calling. And for ever so long, we did uh, evangelistic work, going to prisons and uh, jail and uh, streets and nursing homes and homeless shelters uh, we did for uh, several years and before we ever started pastoring and it is not an easy road because there will be battles that are unforeseen when you least expect it and that's why I know that I know that we, because I'm not no different than anybody else, and just as read back there, there's going to be temptations to come and try to pull us out, pull us down, 
But God will make a way, even with the temptation, that we, we be able to stand, to be able to do the right thing the right way. And, uh, and I know that's true. Uh, I'm just so thankful for Jesus for always being with us. And that's, as I'll tell anybody, I am not perfect. God's always working on me. Jesus is always having to help me out. Holy Spirit is always trying to, to direct my path and keep me on the right. And he will you too, if you let him. But you've got to take control. Don't let the devil take control. Don't let the enemy take control. Let, put yourself in position that God is in control. And it will be wonderful. As always, we invite you to come join us at Mountain Harvest Church. We're one mile off of Highway 58 in West Galax. You uh, turn on Greenville Road at the Caution Light, go exactly one mile, turn, take a ride on Waterfield Road, and as you turn right, you can cut straight into the church parking lot, or you can go around the curve and come in the upper entrance. Uh, service starts a little bit after 11 o'clock on Sundays. i uh, love to have you come be part of our family. And as always, we never close out a Bible study or a service without giving an invitation. Because I may not know what's your, in your heart. I may never see you. You may be one of those that may see this message years down the road. And if you do, you pray this prayer. And if you believe it in your heart, confess it with your mouth. It's unto salvation. God will write your name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And more than anything, when you've confessed it, do it. Make you, your life to profess that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Not just your Savior, but your Lord too. Serve Him. And you'll never, ever, ever, ever regret it. So let's just pray this simple prayer. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins, faults, failures. Lord, I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit so that from this day forward I can serve you and whatever you have got planned and purposed in my life that I can fulfill the call for you. And so, Lord, I praise you, I thank you, in the name of Jesus, amen. You prayed it, you meant it, get ready. God will do a work in your life. So, come join us. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow evening at 6.30. And in between now and then, may God richly use you. Go out there, be a light in a lost and dying world and be ready for our redemption draw nigh Jesus is coming how soon I don't know tonight are you ready a year from now would you still be ready the main thing is be ready be watching and be in love with the Lord Jesus because he loves you God bless you. See you tomorrow evening, 6.30.